Previously on The Bill. I'm a Dr. Polly. I know what lies ahead of me. He's thinking about taking his life. Oh, you look at it. involved in something like this. I shouldn't have called. Where is he? I left everything as it was. That was right, wasn't it? Yeah. Now tell me what happened. Well, he told me to go, but I couldn't stay away. I didn't want him to be there on his own. No one deserves that, do they? No. So I sat there where you are. I watched him inject himself. How long has he been dead? <laughs> Since about 10.30. About? Yeah, well, I can't be sure. OK. He could have overdosed before that, been dead longer. Uh, what about the funeral? He wanted to be cremated. His ashes put with his wife. Good. You can deal with that straight away. Yeah, but there'll be an inquest. I'll have to make a statement. So what are you going to say? <sighs> Polly? I don't believe it. You're not going to say you were here. Why no one killed himself? <sighs> Look, you better go. I need to find the emergency services. I'm not calling anyone yet. Yeah, well, I can't lie about what's happened. Well, don't. But others will. People twist the truth. They'll say you were going out with him. That you helped him commit suicide. But that's not true. You didn't stop him, did you? You said so yourself. No. Well, they're the real lies. Do you really think Owen would have wanted you to deal with this? Well? Of course not. Well, neither do you deep down. That's why you call me. Your closest friend. <laughs> Let me help you. Come on. What you did was an act of mercy. No one should be punished for that. Now all you have to do is stick to a simple story. Story? You came home, you found Owen dead, a syringe in his arm. Shocked you called me. I offered to come round, but you knew what to do because you're a copper. Yeah, but a copper should have stopped him from doing it in the first place. Yeah, but you weren't here, were you? Owen died alone. That's what you tell the police. No one's going to disbelieve you. When you dealt with everyone, you go to bed. You don't come into work tomorrow, yeah? Promise? Thanks, Cafe. You do the same for me. seems to be in order. We'll be keeping the files and syringe just as a precaution. Could you tell me what happened? I came back about 10.30 and found him. I knew he was dead immediately. So I phoned Kathy. I had, I had to talk to someone. What did you tell her? I said that Owen's killed himself. He's committed suicide. And she told me to phone the police. Right, that'll do for now. You'll need to give us a written statement the next time you come back to work. Tomorrow? No, no, just no hurry. You'll be okay? Yeah. I'm really sorry for your loss, Polly. Good night. Good Good morning. 
Hi. Good night, was it? I wish I was up half of it dealing with Polly's crisis. Oh, what's happened? Well, you remember a friend, Owen. You know, the one with a brain tumour. Well, he obviously couldn't take it anymore, and he OD'd last night. Oh. Guess we found him dead. Poor Polly. Yeah, of course, she rang me straight away. Very emotional. Just hope I said the right things. Yeah, well, I'm sure you did. Mm. Well, I was there for her, wasn't I? That's the main thing. Morning, Eva. Oh, nice tan, Gov. I take it the holiday was a success? Yes, it was great, thanks. But as soon as I walk back into this place... A distant memory. Yes. Morning. So what's been going on? Any major problems while I've been away? Or uh, all these messages just for me? No, there's nothing urgent, Gov. There's a couple of cases you need to review. Oh, and Reg on a runaway bus. What? Welcome back. <laughs> and there is one more thing. Some journalist in today doing a piece on Matt Boyden. Oh, good. At least I'll know who to avoid, because anything I'd say wouldn't be principal. Dear Nixon. Is your new DC in? Oh, uh, she should be here any minute. Well, Cat have been on. There's been an allegation of rape down at the Student Hall of Residence on Broad Lane, room 19. A student called Isabel Scott. Presumably you want CSU to do it. Right? That's the plan. OK, I'll get on to it straight away. Good. Uh, how was your holiday? Uh, what holiday? Romani, it's Sergeant Ackland here. Broad Lane? Oh, I'm just around the corner. And the victim's name? Isabel Scott. Okie dokie, I'll phone. Glad you made it. What's the hurry, love? This is. Now move it. DC Romani da Costa, Sun Hill. Isabel Scott? Me. Yeah. Okay. You got here quick. I was just round the corner when they called. They said you reported a serious sexual assault. Would you like to tell me about it? Um, I was at the Union Bar last night when I think my drink was spiked and I was raped. I can't believe I let it happen. You didn't let anything happen, Isabel. Are you happy to continue? I'll be okay. All right. <coughs> well, you can move those. <laughs> Thank you. God, you should see my desk. It's exactly the same. Right. Well, let me tell you what happens first. I need to look for evidence and ask you some questions. And then another officer will come and take you to the refuge, which is a place that specifically deals with this kind of case. You will be medically examined and a statement taken, and she will stay with you all the time. Shall we start? I already have. I logged onto this website. It said forensic evidence is really important. Yes, it is. So I haven't washed or anything, not even cleaned my teeth, and I bagged up all the clothes I wore too. Great. Did it tell you about these two? Oh, yeah. It's just that substance has passed through the body very quickly. Can you manage? Can I? Bursting. <laughs> I just wanted to get things sorted, you know, the statement. As long as you feel up to it. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Sarge, do people know? I've told no one. When you feel ready, it's up to you. Thanks. Polly. All right, Eva. 
Yeah, look, I, I heard what happened with Owen last night, that you found him after he died. Who told you? No, I just, I saw Kathy first thing. She seemed, uh, worried about you. She said that although it was a shock, you know, you coped brilliantly. Really together. Yeah, well, I just did what I had to do. OK, Romani, look, I'll send a sew it and I'll get Uniform to bring over the pro forma questionnaires. Yeah, 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 that's great. OK, bye. Holly, how are you? I'm sorry to hear about that. It must have been dreadful for you. Cathy told me. Yeah, well, it was the best thing for Owen. He knew he was going to die, Sarge. He wanted to do it his own way. Well, you of all people must have understood how he felt. When I took those pills, Sarge, it was a cry for help. Owen knew he wasn't going to get better. Anyway, all I've got to do now is write up my statement. Well, why can't you wait? No, I'd rather get it done. Sarge. Why aren't you at home, like I said? Paul, I know you're upset. The whole thing's been... I can't lie, Kathy. Well, it all seemed so easy last night. But we're police officers. If we don't tell the truth, who will? If you do tell the truth, what use is it being a copper? It'll go against you. I could have acted differently, that's all. I should have done something to stop Owen, but I didn't. And that's what I'm going to say. week to give up smoking, didn't I? Don't worry, I won't tell. Right. Now I need you to tell me what happened, Isabel. Call me easy. Tell me about the party first. Well, it was a night down the union bar. I went with my best mate, Emma. Mm-hmm. What time did you get there? About ten. How much did you have to drink? A few vodka and oranges. Just a few. Did you take anything else? No, not last night. But as I said already, I think my drink was spiked. Why do you think that? Because normally I'm fine, but I was all over the place. We'll do a blood test and if you were given something, we'll find out. Okay. Did you buy your drinks yourself? Yeah. Can you remember who served you? No, it was so busy. Could anyone have put something in your drink? Well, it could have been this guy I copped off with. What was he called? Don't remember. He was DJing, and Emma dared me to pull him, so I took him outside for a snog. What time was that? I don't know. Because after that, I kind of passed out and woke up with this strange guy on top of me. Not the DJ? I, just, I can't be sure. I remember seeing a clock. I think it was midnight. Could you describe it to me? Because it could help find a location. Well, it was like that one. All the rooms here are the same. Could you have been brought back here? I don't know. Do you remember where you woke up? Yeah. It was here. So, I could have been... In which case, the whole room will have to be forensicated. Bed covers, clothes, everything. Don't worry. You're doing fine. I just got your message. Oh. I'm afraid you'll have to wait outside. What's happened? Emma? Yeah. Izzy's made an allegation of rape. We're going to have to take her down to the refuge as soon as possible. I never would have come round to help you. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I'm not as clever as you are. It's nothing to do with being clever. So what are you going to say? Have you thought it through? Yeah. I well, just remember, I'm involved too. It's not just your own grey you're thrown away. Uh, Cathy, shouldn't you be down at Broad Lane meeting DC De Costa? Yeah, I'll go in a minute. Well, now, please. She's waiting for you. All right, Sarge. OK, write your statement. But don't show it to until I get back. Not unless you want to be arrested for assisted suicide.
I think she knows what to expect. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Romani da Costa, new girl. Hi, how you doing? Looks like a few you straighten at the deep end, doesn't it? Something like that. Uh, have you got the uh, questionnaire? Yeah, yes. just here. Great. Now, I'd like you to interview as many students on this block as possible, but concentrate between the hours of 10 p.m. and midnight. I want to know all of Izzy's movements during those crucial two hours. Got it. Great. Time to get some students out of bed, I feel. <laughs> Getting in bed is more like. <laughs> My keys. Thank you. Can I just borrow Emma a while, please? Yeah. It's about the party. What about it? Izzy told us about the DJ. Oh, that. Can you tell me about it? She fancied him. I told her to go for it. Izzy said it was a dare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was it? Okay, why not? I dared her. Do you know the DJ's name? Simon, that's all I know. And what time did they go outside? About 11.30. Is there anything more you can tell me about him? I mean, is it possible that he might have slipped something in her drink without her knowledge? Emma, it's important that you tell me anything that might help catch the rapist. Simon deals. Drugs? All sorts. Have you bought from him? It's important. Yeah. Thanks. So, what have we got? Hi. Romani de Costa. Kathy Bradford, CSU. I believe the victim's drink was spiked. That's what Izzy's alleging, but we won't know for sure till forensics comes through. But at the moment, we're trying to narrow it down to the people who had the means, which at the moment could be the person that she bought the drink from, or this Simon that she went outside with, or uh, somebody else whilst she was outside. Well, that could be anyone. Yeah. But did you catch what Emma said about the dare? No. She nearly denied it. Is that important? Dunno, could be. Anyway, let's go down to the bar and track down this DJ. Yeah, well, Jake's made it in, so where are you? You're on the cleaning road, mate, so shift yourself. What can I do for you? DC De Costa and PC Bradford, Sun Hill. And you are? Kieran Thompson, bar manager. Good party? This isn't another complaint about the noise, is it? Actually, it's more serious than that. Not drugs, I don't let that happen here. It's an allegation of rape, Mr. Thompson. A student claims that she was taken up to a room and assaulted. Could you tell us anything about it? We need to speak to your DJ. Simon Moore? It's Izzy Scott, isn't it? Yeah. Don't tell me she's accused Simon. I don't believe this. It sets hardly over and it's like out of the way Izzy's on the pool. When was this? About half eleven, I think. She dragged him outside. Did other people see this? Yeah. Look, this may sound a bit hard, but Simon's a mate of mine. And nothing surprises me about Izzy. She's got a real reputation. Well, we'd like to speak to Mr. Moore. Do you have an address? Well, Simon's not here. Let's go back to the station. See what uniform we've got. Simon Moore? Yeah? DC De Costa and PC Bradford Sunhill, can I ask you a few questions? What about? We're investigating a rape allegation. Oh no, ma'am, where? At the party in the Union Bar last night. I understand you DJed. I played a few tunes, yeah. What time was that? Oh, 10 to 11.30. Uh, then I had a break, played again about midnight. About? The other bloke didn't show up, I stood in. And what did you do in your break? Chilled out. And you didn't see anything unusual or anybody behaving strangely or... Well, the students, aren't they? <laughs> Just answer the question, please. No, I didn't. Right. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Right. Cheers. You're just going to let him go? No. Yeah, but he deals. He could easily have spiked as he's drank. The problem is that Izzy thinks she was raped at 12. That's when Simon was still DJing. Yeah, we can still nick him. Let's just read the witness statements first, see what they have to say, and then decide, yeah? Yes. 
Well, are you sure you're all right to do this? You look exhausted. Yeah, I'm just trying to work out what to do with my statement. Well, are you having trouble writing it? No, it, it's just I'll have to move out of Owens. Well, where are you going to go? Back to me mum's, probably. Well, that's a good idea. Sarge, have that's... you um, got the witness statements for the rape case? Uh, yeah, ah, Holly, this is DC Romani de Costa. She's our new sex crime specialist. Nice to meet you. Hey, welcome aboard. Thank you. Oh, I like the office. Oh. View too. Oh, don't tell me you last. Sorry, just then. You're going to tell Sergeant that, yeah. Polly. Yeah, people, yeah. Yes. I was going to tell her the truth. Fine, you tell her the truth. But before you do, listen to this. I'm working on a rape case at the moment. When someone's told the truth. Only she's a 20-year-old student who goes with anything in trousers. How do you think she'll get justice? Nah. She'll be dragged through the system, spat out. Probably not even get a conviction. Now, if they do that to a genuine victim. What do you think they're going to do to a cop who watched someone kill themselves and did nothing? Kathy? Look, I'm doing this for you, believe me. Right. Right, how's it going? Uh, you know what, Sarge? I'm fine. I'm just going to finish this up and go. Are you sure? Yeah, thanks. Okay. After all this, I don't know where to begin. Well, this confirmed Simon was DJing at midnight. Yes, and there are several others to all backing up his alibi. So where does that leave us? Well, Simon could still have supplied drugs to the rapist. We should get a search warrant. And he's probably got rid of his stash by now. Maybe, but I wasn't going to rush in there and then and make our suspicions obvious. We needed to check his story out first. Right, anything useful? Yes and no. One of our suspects has confirmed his alibi for the rape, but I think he's involved in some way. In fact, I'm sure he is. Mr. Pritchard. Sergeant Murphy. Thank you for seeing me. Superintendent O'Cara said you were writing an article about Matthew Boyden? Yeah, I want to do a story about how Sunhill is coping with the loss of a popular colleague. Well, I only worked with him briefly, but I'll try to answer any questions. I'm sure you'll be very useful. Detective Inspector Nixon, this is Dougie Pritchard from the Kenley Evening News. I have some information which Matt gave me about the father of your daughter. Maybe we could meet. Romani, found that in the bathroom cabinet. What's this, Simon? Mouthwash. Then you won't mind if we take it away and get it tested. All right, I'll tell you. It's GHB. Liquid ecstasy. The problem is, Simon, it can be used as a date rape drug, can't it? Could be the drug used on Izzy Scott last night. You're not serious. We have one witness who says they saw you dealing at the party last night. We have another witness who says they saw you going off with Izzy at around 11.30. Why would I want to rape Izzy? She was the one who came on to me. So that's what you were expecting, was it? No. Sex with Izzy? No. Simon Moore, I'm arresting you on suspicion of rape. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something that you later rely on in court. You can't just drag me in here. Accuse me of rape, make me have a medical. All I did was take her outside and have a snog. What time was this? I told you it was 11.30. I was back again at 12. Who did you sell the GHB to? I didn't. Then you're stuffed, mate. You're still our main suspect. You may have an alibi, but I think you're involved, and I will keep you here as long as it takes. You want to get out? Simon, help me. Tell me who you sold the GHB to. Interview terminated. I sold it to the bar manager, all right. And I've got proof he left a message on my mobile. Hey, how'd it go? Good. We've got another suspect. Kieran Thompson, bar manager. Uniform and bringing them in. So your instincts were right then. Oh, hi. I uh, don't think we've met yet. DC Romani de Costa. Dear Nixon. Pleased to meet you. You too. I think it's going to make a real difference having a sex crime specialist on the team. And I hear you've passed your sergeant's exam. I just got lucky. 
while I was told it was nothing to do with luck. Anyway, welcome. Thank you. I'm going home. At last I'll call you. Right. Hey, Polly. Sorry. This came for you. Thanks. Oh. Polly? It's nothing. No, it isn't. Just leave it, Kathy. I will, when you tell me. Oh, what, so you can go and tell Eva and the rest of the station? She asked me, what was I supposed to say? Pretend nothing had happened? That's what you're so angry about. I can't handle this right now. we've been through. I, I can understand how upset you are. But I just can't let it go, okay? Okay? It's from Owen. What? The letter. He must have posted it a couple of days ago. Will you read it for me? You sure? you should prepare yourself. Owen's decided to leave you all his money. £150,000. Eva, can you do me a favour? According to this memo, the journalist doing the article on Matt Boyden should be arriving about now. Can you find out what he's interested in? I thought you didn't want to know. Well, I don't, but he might be trying to dig up dirt. About Abigail and Matt? Well, who knows, but the last thing I want is the story of how that creep used my daughter splashed all over the papers. I'll try and find out. Thanks. Didn't look too happy. Mind you, who would after a full forensic examination? Oh, he agreed to it. Only after he spoke to his solicitor. Mm -hmm. Is that his statement? Yeah, sorry. Okay, thanks. Okay. I still can't believe it. Why well, you're in no state to deal with any of this. You never were. You couldn't just still to make the situation worse. Kathy, I'd like to interview Kieran before Emma arrives. Emma? I like to keep the momentum up, so I've got somebody picking her up now. All right, well, just give me five minutes. I want to see Polly out. Well, thanks for all your help. Uh, but I wondered, now that I'm here, do you think uh, I might be able to talk to somebody else? Why? Well, you know, get another angle. I thought perhaps uh, D.I. Nixon might agree. I left a message. Yeah, she's been away. But she's back now, are you? Look, I'm sure if she wants to talk to you, she'll get in touch with you, Mr. Pritchard, OK? Goodbye. Just go home, Paul. Well, I don't have one. And now Owen's gone, I'll have to move out. I was thinking maybe... I'll... Oh, you don't want to stay with me. I'm the flatmate from hell. Oh, look, sorry, I just don't have people to stay. Anyway, I thought you told Sergeant Ackland that you are going to stay with your mum. Yeah, I guess I did. Excuse me. Dougie Pritchard. Sorry? Canley Evening News. I'm uh, doing an article about Matt Boyden, how Sunhill is coping with the loss of a popular officer. Well, I'm very busy. Did you know him? Is this on the record? How about off the record? I heard there was something going on between Matt Boyden and your D.I. Nixon. No comment. Sam Nixon's 15-year-old daughter knew Matt Boyden, didn't she? How well did she know him? You know, on a, on a scale of one to ten. 
Oh, I'd say, uh, 11. Thought so. Oh, Sarge, is Ducky Pritchard still here? I heard you interviewed him earlier. That's right, I just saw him out. Oh. Sheila, I mean, Sarge. Yes. About last night, our little moment. What do you mean? You kissed me. You trying to pretend it didn't happen? No. So what was it all about? Look, it just happened. Is there a problem? No. Fine. Sarge. Yeah. Mr. Pritchard! Yeah, I'll call you back. DC Sharp, yeah? No, I covered Joanna's disappearance. How is she now? I'm not here to talk about my daughter. What then? D.I. Nixon wants to know what you're doing here at Sun Hill. She got my message. Well, why don't she arrange a meeting? I can tell her person. That is not what she wants. No? No. Well, pass on the message, will you? Tell her sooner or later she'll have no choice. Come in. Did you speak to him? Yeah. And he wouldn't tell me. Says he needs to speak to you. He wants to meet. Gov, if you want my honest opinion, I think he does know something about Abigail and Boyden. That's what I was afraid of. So, what do you want to do? Dion Nixon. Yeah. Where from? Yeah. No, no, I've got it. Just keep me informed. Someone's just called CAD. Looks like an armed robbery is kicking off at the Union Building Society on Talbot Street. Can you describe your duties last night, Mr. Thompson? As bar manager, I ensure the bar runs smoothly. And did you serve the drinks yourself? Yeah. All night? No, I had a break about 10.30 and another around midnight. Was Simon playing during both those breaks? I think so. And the second one at midnight? It's all in the statement I gave you. The problem is, Kieran, the statement contradicts what you said earlier. Then you said Simon took Izzy out at 11.30. And in this it says midnight. Which is it? I said around midnight. That doesn't help us. I'm sorry. Now Simon's account is more consistent. <laughs> Simon smokes too much dope. Surely you can see that. He can't tell his arse from his elbow. Well, he also told us that he sold you some GHB last night and he was quite clear about that. He let us check his mobile. He left a message. Are we sorted? I ring everybody. It's my job. And it's your job to serve behind the bar, Kieran, so you had ample opportunity to spike Izzy's drink. Did anyone also tell you I helped Izzy back to a room around midnight? Several witnesses, in fact. One said midnight, another said quarter past Why didn't you tell us this before? And play right into Izzy's hands. <laughs> I know what she's capable of. And what are you capable of, Kieran? Raping an unconscious woman? Is that what gets you off? All right. This is what happened. The rock solid truth. As I was taken Izzy back to her room, she said Simon was just for starters. She wanted more. So we had sex. Okay? In a room. Not proud of it, but there you go. It was fully adult. Fully consensual. Sex. Did I have to take you back into custody for the time being, Mr. Thompson? Then what? We haven't finished our inquiries yet. It's all gone today, isn't it? I'm robbery. Better get down there or they start without us. Des! What? Not a problem, is there? No. Fine. All units from Sierra Oscar. Armed robbery in progress. Union Building Society, Talbot Street. Two suspects, both wearing crash helmets. Thanks for coming in, Emma. It's okay. Let's get there. 
How's Izzy? She got back from the refuge and just crashed. I bet she's glad to have you around. Actually, she didn't want me to leave. This won't take long. We want to ask you about Kieran Thompson. Kieran? Hmm. Simon Moore has admitted to selling him GHB, which we think could have been used on Izzy. Now, Kieran denies this, but has admitted to having sex with Izzy, with her consent. Do you know about this? About Kieran and Izzy? Yes. I wasn't sure. But you suspected? Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell us this before? Because I didn't know. But Emma, Izzy's your best friend. You dared her to snog Simon, and she said nothing about Kieran all evening. Best friends don't share everything you know. Right? Okay, you can go. Sierra Oscar to all units not involved in pursuit. Please switch to channel two. We're at speed on West Key Road, we're at 45. We are turning left into Lockyer Street. Lockyer Street. We are pulling out to overtake it. Oh, there's a car coming the other way. Move! And we are turning left out of Lofter Street. Over. How are they? Yeah, one's quite serious. They're both in the ghost St. Hughes. Names? Harry Jones and Mike Grantham. All right, we need to order another ambulance. If this is an inside job, we don't want them sorting their stories out. Right. All right, let's get talking to some people. Someone must have seen something. Left, left into Airlie Lane. It's a dead end. Suspects have to camp there on foot. They're heading over the footbridge towards Harville Street. We're giving chase. Over. How far is the ARV? It's close. All right, lads. Let's take it easy. Pot, the gun down. Get on the radio. Find out what's happening. We know what's happening. They might be hurt, unable to answer. 355 from Sierra Oscar, receiving. <laughs> 355 from Sierra Oscar, receiving. Are you harmed? No, went over our heads. Suspects 
Suspects are now on motorbikes, they're on black Hondas, they're on Fawcett Gardens, heading towards Doval Street. We've lost them, over. You okay? Panda 8-4, close to Doval Street. I've cut them off at Classy Street. On the roadworks? I'll find a way. Have you decided what you're going to do about Kieran? I'm going to have to release him. Be sure? At the moment, it's his word against hers, is he had no injuries to suggest it wasn't consensual. Yeah, no, thanks. She wouldn't necessarily if she'd been drugged. Ah, we won't know for sure till the sample's tested. Well, that's been the trouble from the start. No hard evidence. There could also be another possibility, which is that Kieran's telling the truth and the real rapist is still out there. OK. I'll call the lab for chase the test results. Mint? Mm, thanks. Do you really believe Kieran's innocent? Nope. This isn't an easy case, Ramoni. Oh, <laughs> it's my first day, Sarge. Everybody's expecting me to prove myself, aren't they? Get a result. Right. It's time to review. Establish a timeline for the whole night and get more eyewitnesses. And I'd also like to talk to Emma again. Emma? Is his so-called best mate. She was at the party, too. And something that she said about Izzy that really bugged me. What, something suspicious? No, it was... It was more like she was blaming her. Mm. I'd like to get to the bottom of it. Good. Um, how'd you get McCaffey? Fine. I mean, it's got completely different style to me, but mm -hmm. that's cool. <laughs> it could be a good thing. Great. Right. Second bike abandoned. Could have had him. Sure you could. Suspects heading towards Larchfield Close. Registration, whiskey, 459. <sighs> Unable to follow. OK, we now have three separate crime scenes. We have the Union Building Society in Talbot Street, we have the abandoned car in Airlie Lane, and now we have the crash motorbike in Doval Street. And that's where Honey and Gary are at present? Yeah. We've lost them, but they can't be far. Right, well, I'm going to get down to Talbot Street then. Contact Sergeant Hunter and make sure he gets straight over to Doval Street. Gov. Right. Did you see what happened? We arrived after. Well, the job was fast as a good time, not fast enough. Even when they took a tumble, they still managed to get away. Yeah, well, we... Well, we got stopped behind roadworks. Well, the thing I don't understand is why the bikes came down in the first place. All units from Sierra Oscar. Suspects now proceeding along Metal Lane. Look at this. It's a trip wire. These blokes were actually brought down deliberately. But did you see what happened to the bag full of cash? I didn't even see that they had a bag. This was no accident, right? These blokes were ambushed. You're gonna need to have a few more words with you back at St Hughes, Mike, all right? Thank you. Is there an update? We've lost them. Their bike disappeared down Trafalgar Mews into traffic, but we did get a partial registration. All right, look, I want as much as you can get me on the crash bike as soon as, yeah? Will do. Everything under control? Yep, we're collecting witness statements. Right, anything interesting? Uh, a couple of customers inside when it started. Apparently one of the security guards chased a man to the pavement. Oh yeah, that'd look good if it was an inside job, wouldn't it? Have a go hero. Mm. I want to interview them as soon as possible. What about the bike? Well, we've lost track of it for now, but I want to put a description out. Do you think we can organise a press conference? You want to speak to the journalists? Why not? Crime robber is very sexy, there should be lots of public interest. And we're going to be stretched enough as it is. Talk to me, Phil. Yeah, the bike's sorted. Yeah, forensics are on their way. Any witnesses? CCTV? Yeah, look, we're on the case. But what you really need to know is these blokes were jumped. Jumped? Yeah, there was a tripwire across the street. Looks like they took off without the cash, so we're looking at a possible ambush. Right, I'm going to need you back at the station. What? Phil, there's going to be stuff coming in from all over the place. I need someone to run the operation from CID. Gov, I'm... Don't fight me on this, Phil. Just do it.
you get an offside? Yeah. Have fun. See, in Australia, they would have ended differently. Yeah. Would have had something to shoot back with. Mm -hmm. 432 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Sarge? Just wanted you to know that we're all very happy you're still with us, Des. Just checking up on my officers. Oh, I'm all right, thanks, Sarge. So you've heard them? It's all around the station. All oh, right. I don't know why you were thinking about taking a risk like that. It's all in a day's work. No, it isn't. Well, you know what they say about near-death experiences? It's an aphrodisiac. Take a cold shower, PC Taverner. I will if you scrub me back. Wait, wait, wait. You won't believe this. Someone's just asked if there's a reward. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Anxious, man. Yeah. Excuse me. Will uh, D.I. Nixon be making the appeal herself? What do you want? <laughs> no, no, no. That is a great description. No, it's going to go out now. Thank you. Gav, um, Doug and Prince Charles over there with the press. <coughs> What's to know if you'll be making an appeal yourself? All right. Thanks, Eva. Gus? Yeah. They're ready. Coming. Yep. Detective Inspector Nixon? Yeah. My name's Dougie Pritchard. I'd like to talk to you about your daughter, Abigail. Uh, not now. I have an appeal to make. Then how about this man? Glenn Weston. I don't know any Glenn Weston. What? The man you used to live with? That's not true. I <laughs> checked the electoral register, D.I. Nixon. I know you had a child by him, too. Can you excuse me? And I know that Glenn Weston changed his name from Ian McCarthy. The same Ian McCarthy was convicted of murdering another kiddie when he was ten. I have a job. Everybody remembers it. It was all over the papers. Abigail gave Glenn's name to Matt Boyden and he passed it on to me. Now, he said it was a favour for a friend, but we both know that wasn't quite the case, so... Is it time for Abigail to find out who her father is? This has nothing to do with my daughter. It's too late for that. Is it true? I've got to get to Abigail. Is it true? Yeah, it's true. Next time on The Bill. He's still here. He's pushing it. You told her that she was the product of a one-night stand. And Abigail came to me. Have you said anything? Have you told her about Weston? Glenn Weston? I'd be worried about anyone under my command. Oh.